Saab 900 seconds generation symbolizes the beginning of a new era for the Swedish company. For the first time in history, a car of this brand was built on a foreign platform. Donor was Opel Vectra. But fortunately, the Swedish engineers managed to keep many developments and the Saab 900 has not lost its individuality. Production of the second generation Saab 900 began in 1994 and ended in 1998. Such a relatively short lifespan, in fact, was a preparation for the release of the Saab 9-3 model, which was also built on the Opel Vector platform, but of the next generation. The Saab 900 engine range consisted mainly of inline four-cylinder engines. There were both atmospheric and supercharged versions. The most common volume of 2.0 liters in the atmospheric version had a power of 130 horsepower, and its supercharged versions of varying degrees of forcing produced up to 185 horsepower, which at that time was an excellent indicator. In addition, a 2.3-liter unit from the older Saab 9000 model was installed on the Saab 900, however, only in the atmospheric version. Supercharged versions of it already appeared in the Saab 9-3. Got a Saab 900 and a 2.5-liter V6, developed by GM specialists. But it was heavier and weaker than its 2-liter supercharged rival and, as a result, was not very popular. Gearboxes for all engines were offered as a 5-speed manual and 4-band automatic. The front suspension of all versions of the Saab 900 was very peculiar. The upper part is very reminiscent of the classic McPherson, but below it, instead of one A-shaped lever, there are two separate ones, fastened together through a silent block. Behind the usual beam, but with an anti-roll bar. This design endowed the Saab 900 with excellent handling and sane ride. It is not so easy to find a Saab 900 in good condition in Ukraine now more often come across either completely running copies, or tuned beyond recognition. For well-groomed owners ask for decent amounts. Everything shows that people are in no hurry to part with a high-quality and very reliable Swedish car. The resource of atmospheric four-cylinder engines easily exceeds 400 to 500,000 kilometers. They require only periodic replacement of belts, candles and working fluids. Turbocharged engines have a more modest resource. During normal operation, the restoration of the turbocharger is required every 150 to 200,000 km, and the resource of the cylinder piston group reaches almost the same 400 to 500,000 km as that of atmospheric engines. But the Opelovsky V6 is much less reliable. Breakdown of one of the cylinder head gaskets is a common occurrence. As a rule, this happens at 250 to 300,000 km and ends with a major overhaul of the motor. Manual gearboxes, especially on versions with a turbo engine, require intervention from time to time. The weak point is the differential bearings, the gear selection mechanism and the rocker. If the previous owner did not comply with the maintenance regulations and did not change the oil on time, the repair costs are guaranteed. Cars with an automatic are not so common. The condition of the automatic transmission mainly depends on the accuracy of their use. With a measured rhythm of driving and timely maintenance, they are, as they say, eternal. But it's worth driving or skidding on an old automatic machine and its failure is almost guaranteed. The suspension on the Saab 900 is solid. The silent blocks of the front levers are nursed by 60 to 100,000 km. A slightly longer resource for transverse levers with ball bearings. The front shock absorbers inserts also serve about 100,000 km. Twice the resource of the front suspension springs. 100 to 150,000 km are able to serve the bearings of the front hubs. Consumables with a resource of 30 to 40,000 km are only bushings and stabilizer struts. The steering rack lives for about 200,000 km, after which its restoration is required. The rear suspension only once every 150 to 200,000 km requires the replacement of a pair of penny silent blocks. True, with frequent use with a loaded trunk, the Saab 900 strongly sags the rear suspension springs and the rear shock absorbers fail. Electrical equipment is generally reliable but honorable age makes itself felt. Dry insulation, oxidized connectors and rotten wires are the scourge of all cars of this age. The second generation Saab 900 has a lot of positive qualities. This is a reliable, charismatic, original and driving car. They get used to it and do not spare money for its maintenance. Only absolutely merciless circumstances can force the owner of a Saab 900 to sell his car. Often these Saabs are tuned and made into very dynamic cars, but there are other stories as well. If the maintenance of the old car becomes too heavy a financial burden and the owner starts saving on the car, the Saab 900 quickly loses its charisma and turns first into an ordinary car, and then comes into a deplorable state. Buying such neglected copies is a desperate step, and those who decide on it should understand that restoring an old car is an expensive undertaking.